This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Canti 21 through 25. Canto 21. From bridge to bridge thus, speaking other things of which my comedy cares not to sing, we came along and held the summit, when we halted to behold another fisher of Malabolja and other vain laments, and I beheld it marvelously dark. As in the arsenal of the Venetians boils in the winter with the tenacious pitch to smear their unsound vessels over again, for sail they cannot, and instead thereof one makes his vessel new, one recocks the ribs of that which many a voyage has made, one hammers at the prow, one at the stern, this one makes oar, and that one cordage twists, another mends the mainsail and the mizzen, Thus, not by fire, but by the art divine, was boiling down below there a dense pitch, which upon every side the bank belied. I saw it, but I did not see within it aught but the bubbles that the boiling raised, and all swell up and resubside compressed. The while below there fixedly I gazed, my leader, crying out, Beware, beware, drew me unto himself from where I stood. Then I turned round as one who is impatient to see what it behoves him to escape in whom a sudden terror doth a man, who, while he looks, delays not his departure, and I beheld behind us a black devil, running long upon the crag, approach. Ah, how ferocious was he in his aspect, and how he seemed to me in action ruthless, with open wings and light upon his feet. His shoulders, which sharp-pointed were and high, the sinner did encumber with both haunches, and he held clutched the sinews of the feet. From off our bridge, he said, O Malebranque, behold one of the elders of St. Zita. Plunge him beneath, for I return for others unto that town, which is well furnished with them. All these are barriters, except Bonturo. No, and to yes, for money there is changed. He hurled him down, and over the hard crag turned round, and never was a mastiff loosened in so much hurry to pursue a thief. The other sank, and rose again face downward, but the demons, under cover of the bridge, cried, here the Santo Volto has no place. Here swims one otherwise than in the Sergio. Therefore, if for our gaffs thou wishest not, do not uplift thyself above the pitch. They seized him then with more than a hundred rakes. They said, It here behoves thee to dance covered, that, if thou canst, thou secretly mayst pilfer. Not otherwise the cooks their scullions make, immerse into the middle of the cauldron the meat with hooks, so that it may not float, said the good master to me. That it be not apparent thou art here, crouch thyself down behind a jag, that thou mayest have some screen. And for no outrage that is done to me, be thou afraid, because these things I know, for once before was I in such a scuffle. Then he passed on beyond the bridge's head, and as upon the sixth bank he arrived, need was for him to have a steadfast front. With the same fury, and the same uproar, as dogs leap out upon a mendicant, who on a sudden begs where he stops, they issued from beneath the little bridge, and turned against him all their grappling irons. But he cried out, Be none of you malignant. Before those hooks of yours lay hold of me, let one of you step forward, who may hear me, and then take counsel as to grappling me. They all cried out, Let Malakoda go, whereat one started, and the rest stood still. And he came to him, saying, What avails it? Thinkest thou, Malakota, to behold me advanced into this place, my master said, safe hitherto from all your skill of fence, without the will divine and fate auspicious? Let me go on, for it in heaven is willed that I another show this savage road. Then was his arrogance so humbled in him, that he let fall his grapnel at his feet, and to the others said, Now strike him not. And unto me, my guide, O thou who sittest among the splinters of the bridge crouched down, securely now return to me again. Wherefore I started and came swiftly to him, and all the devils forward thrust themselves, so that I feared they would not keep their compact. And thus beheld I once afraid the soldiers who issued under safeguard from Caprona, seeing themselves among so many foes. Close did I press myself with all my person beside my leader, and turned not mine eyes from off their countenance, which was not good. They lowered their rakes, and, Wilt thou have me hit him, they said to one another, on the rump? And answered, Yes, see that thou nick him with it. But the same demon who was holding parley with my conductor turned him very quickly and said, Be quiet, be quiet, Scarmiglione, then said to us, You can no farther go forward upon this crag, because is lying all shattered at the bottom of this sixth arch. And if it still doth please you to go onward, pursue your way along upon this rock, near as another crag that yields a path. 
Yesterday, five hours later than this hour, 1,266 years were complete that here the way was broken. I send in that direction some of mine to see if any one doth err himself. Go ye with them, for they will not be vicious. Step forward, Ali Kino and Calcabrina, began he to cry out, and thou, Cagnazzo and Barbericha, do thou guide the ten. Come forward, Libicocco and Draghignazzo, and Tusk Ciriato and Graffia Cane, and Farfarello and Mad Rubicante. Search ye all round about the boiling pitch. Let these be safe as far as the next crag, that all unbroken passes o'er the dens. Oh me, what is it, master, that I see? Pray let us go, I said, without an escort, if thou knowest how, since for myself I ask none. If thou art as observant as thy want is, dost thou not see that they do gnash their teeth, and with their brows are threatening woe to us? And he to me, I will not have thee fear, let them gnash on according to their fancy, because they do it for those boiling wretches. Along the left-hand dike they wheeled about, but first had each one thrust his tongue between his teeth towards their leader for a signal, and he made a trumpet of his rump. Canto 22 I have erewhile seen horsemen moving camp, begin the storming, and their muster make, and sometimes starting off for their escape. Von couriers have I seen upon your land, O Aretines, and foragers go forth, tournaments stricken, and the joustings run, sometimes with trumpets, and sometimes with bells, with kettle drums, and signals of the castles, and with our own, and with outlandish things, but never yet with bagpipes so uncouth did I see horsemen move, nor infantry, nor ship by any sign of land or star. We went upon our way with the ten demons, ah, savage company, but in the church with saints, and in the tavern with the gluttons. Ever upon the pitch was my intent, to see the whole condition of that bolgia, and of the people who therein were burned. Even as the dolphins, when they make a sign to mariners by arching of the back, that they should counsel take to save their vessel, thus sometimes to alleviate his pain, one of the sinners would display his back, and in less time conceal it, then it lightens as on the brink of water in a ditch. The frogs stand only with their muzzles out, so that they hide their feet in other bulk. So upon every side the sinners stood, but ever as Barbariccia near them came, thus underneath the boiling they withdrew. I saw, and still my heart doth shudder at it, one waiting thus, even as it comes to pass, one frog remains, and down another dives. And Grafia Khan, who most confronted him, grappled him by his tresses smeared with pitch, and drew him up so that he seemed an otter. I knew before the names of all of them, so had I noted them when they were chosen, and when they called each other, listened how. O oh, Rubicante, see that thou do lay thy claws upon him, so that thou mayst flay him, cried all together the accursed ones. And I, my master, see to it, if thou canst, that thou mayst know who is this luckless wight, thus come into his adversary's hands. Near to the side of him my leader drew, asked of him whence he was, and he replied, I in the kingdom of Navarre was born. My mother placed me servant to a lord, for she had borne me to a ribald knave, destroyer of himself and of his things. Then I domestic was of good King Thibault, and I set me there to practice baratry, for which I pay the reckoning in this heat. And Chiriato, from whose mouth projected on either side a tusk, as in a boar, caused him to feel how one of them could rip. Among malicious cats the mouse had come, but Barbericha clasped him in his arms and said, Stand ye aside while I enfork him. And to my master he turned round his head. Ask him again, he said, if more thou wish to know from him before someone destroy him. The guide. Now tell then of the other culprits. Knowest thou any one who is a lation under the pitch? And he. I separated lately from one who is a neighbor to it. Would that I still were covered up with him, for I should fear not either claw nor hook. And Libicoco. We have borne too much, and with his grapnel seized him by the arm. So that, by rending, he tore off a tendon. Ike, Dragignazo, wished to pounce upon him. Down at the legs, whence their decurion turned round and around about with evil look. When they again somewhat were pacified of him, who still was looking at his wound, demanded my conductor without stay, who is that one from whom a luckless parting? Thou sayest thou hast made to come ashore? And he replied, It was Friar Gomita. He of Galura, vessel of all fraud, who had the enemies of his lord in hand, and dealt so with them each exults thereat. Money he took, and let them smoothly off, as he says, and in other offices a barator was he, not mean, but sovereign. 
four gatherers with him, one Don Miquel Zanke of Logodoro, and if Sardinia and Tagasso never do their tongues feel tired. Oh me, see that one, how he grinds his teeth. Still farther would I speak, but am afraid lest he to scratch my itch be making ready. And the grand provost turned to Farfarello, who rolled his eyes about as if to strike, said, Stand aside there, thou malicious bird. If you desire either to see or hear, the terror-stricken recommends thereon, Tuscans or Lombards, I will make them come. But let the Malebranque cease a little, so that these may not their revenges fear, and I, down sitting in this very place, for one that I am will make seven come, when I shall whistle, as our custom is, to do whenever one of us comes out. Cagnazzo at these words his muzzle lifted, shaking his head, and said, Just hear the trick which he has thought of, down to throw himself. Whence he, who snares in great abundance had, responded, I by far too cunning am, when I procure for mine a greater sadness. Ali Keen held not in, but running counter unto the rest, said to him, If thou dive, I will not follow thee upon the gallop, but I will beat my wings above the pitch, the height be left, and be the bank a shield, to see if thou alone dost countervail us. O thou who readest, thou shalt hear new sport. Each to the other side his eyes averted, he first, who most reluctant was to do it. The Navarrese selected well his time, planted his feet on land, and in a moment leaped and released himself from their design whereat each one was suddenly stung with shame, but he most who was cause of the defeat. Therefore he moved and cried, Thou art overtaken. But little it availed, for wings could not outstrip the fear. The other one went under, and flying upward, he his breast directed. Not otherwise the duck upon a sudden dives under, when the falcon is approaching, and upward he returneth, cross and weary. Infuriate at the mockery, Calcabrina, flying behind him, followed close, desirous the other should escape to have a quarrel. And when the barrator had disappeared, he turned his talons upon his companion and grappled with him right above the moat. But sooth the other claw was a doughty sparhawk to clapper claw him well, and both of them fell in the middle of the boiling pond. A sudden intercessor was the heat, but nevertheless of rising there was naught, to such degree they had their wings maligned. Lamenting with the others, Barabaricha made four of them fly to the other side with all their gaffs, and very speedily this side and that they to their post descended. They stretched their hooks toward the pitch ensnared, who were already baked within the crust, and in this manner busied did we leave them. Inferno, Canto 23 Silent, alone, and without company, we went, the one in front, the other after, as go the minor friars along their way. Upon the fable of Aesop was directed my thought, by reason of the present quarrel, where he has spoken of the frog and mouse. For Mo and Isa are not more alike than this one is to that, if well we couple end and beginning with a steadfast mind. And even as one thought from another springs, so afterwards from that was born another, which the first fear within me double made. Thus did I ponder, these on our account are laughed to scorn, with injury and scoff so great that much I think it must annoy them. If anger be engrafted on ill will, they will come after us more merciless than dog upon the leveret which he seizes. I felt my hair stand all on end already with terror and stood backwardly intent when I said, Master, if thou hidest not thyself and me forthwith, of Malibranche I am in dread. We have them now behind us, so I imagine them, I already feel them. And he, if I were made of leaded glass, thine outward image should I not attract, sooner to me than I imprint the inner. Just now thy thoughts came in among my own, with similar attitude and similar face, so that of both one counsel soul I made, if preaventure the right bank so slope, that we to the next Bolgia can descend, we shall escape from the imagined chase. Not yet he finished rendering such opinion, when I beheld them come with outstretched wings, not far remote, with will to seize upon us. My leader on a sudden seized me up, even as a mother who by noise is wakened, close beside her sees the enkindled flames, who takes her son and flies and does not stop, 
having more care of him than of herself, so that she clothes her only with a shift. And downward from the top of the hard bank supine he gave him to the pendant rock that one side of the other bulge walls. Ne'er ran so swiftly water through a sluice to turn the wheel of any land-built mill when nearest to the paddles it approaches, as did my master down along that border, bearing me with him on his breast away as his own son, and not as a companion. Hardly the bed of the ravine below his feet had reached, ere they had reached the hill right over us, but he was not afraid. For the high providence which had ordained to place the ministers of the fifth moat, the power of thence departing took from all. The painted people there below we found, who went about with footsteps very slow, weeping, and in their semblance tired and vanquished. They had on mantles with the hoods low down before their eyes, and fashioned of the cut that in Cologne they for the monks were made. Without they gilded are so that it dazzles, but inwardly all leaden and so heavy that Frederick used to put them on of straw. O oh, everlastingly fatiguing mantle! Again we turned us, still to the left hand, along with them, intent on their sad plaint. But owing to the weight, that weary folk came on so tardily that we were new in company at each motion of the haunch. Whence I unto my leader, see thou find someone who may by deed or name be known, and thus in going move thine eye about. And one, who understood the Tuscan speech, cried to us from behind, Stay ye your feet, ye who so run athwart the dusky air. Perhaps thou wilt have for me what thou demandest. Whereat the leader turned him and said, Wait, and then according to his pace proceed. I stopped, and too beheld I show great haste of spirit in their faces to be with me, but the burden in the narrow way delayed them. When they came up, long with an eye askance, they scanned me without uttering a word, then to each other turned and said together, He, by the action of his throat, seems living, and if dead they are, by what privilege go they uncovered by the heavy stole? Then said to me, Tuscan, who to the college of miserable hypocrites are come, do not disdain to tell us who thou art. And I to them, born was I, and grew up in the great town on the fair river of Arno, and with the body am I have always had. But who are ye, in whom there trickles down along your cheeks such grief as I behold, and what pain is upon you that so sparkles? And one replied to me, these orange cloaks are made of lead so heavy that the weights cause in this way their balances to creak. Frati Godenti were we, and Bolognese. I, Catalano, and he, Luderingo, named, and together taken by thy city, as the want is to take one man alone, for maintenance of its peace, and we were such that still it is apparent round Garidingo. O friars, began I, your iniquitous, but said no more for to mine eyes there rushed one crucified with three stakes on the ground. When me he saw, he writhed himself all over, blowing into his beard with suspirations, and the friar Catalan, who noticed this, said to me, This transfixed one whom thou seest, counseled the Pharisees that it was meet to put one man to torture for the people. Crosswise and naked is he on the path, as thou perceivest, and he needs must feel whoever passes first how much he weighs and in like mode his father-in-law is punished within this moat, and the others of the council, which for the Jews was a malignant seed. And thereupon I saw Virgilius marvel over him, who was extended on the cross so vilely in eternal banishment. Then he directed to the friar his voice, Be not displeased, if granted thee, to tell us, if to the right hand any pass slope down, by which we too may issue forth from here, without constraining some of the black angels to come and extricate us from this deep. Then he made answer, Nearer than thou hopest, there is a rock that forth from the great circle proceeds and crosses all the cruel valleys, save that at this tis broken and does not bridge it. You will be able to mount up the ruin that sidelong slopes and at the bottom rises. The leader stood a while with head bowed down, then said, The business badly be recounted who grapples with his hook at the sinners yonder. And the friar, Many of the devil's vices once heard I at Bologna, and among them that he's a liar and the father of lies. Thereat my leader with great strides went on, somewhat disturbed with anger in his looks, whence from the heavy laden I departed, after the prince of his beloved feet. Inferno, Canto 24 In that part of the youthful year wherein the sun his locks beneath Aquarius tempers, and now the nights draw near to half the day. 
what time the hoarfrost copies on the ground the outward semblance of her sister white, but little last the temper of her pen. The husbandman, whose forage faileth him, rises and looks, and seeth the champagne all gleaming white, whereat he beats his flank, returns indoors, and up and down laments, like a poor wretch who knows not what to do. Then he returns, and hope revives again. Seeing the world has changed its countenance in a little time, he takes his shepherd's crook, and forth the little lambs to pasture drives. Thus did the master fill me with alarm, when I beheld his forehead so disturbed, and to the ailment came as soon as the plaster. For as we came unto the ruined bridge, the leader turned to me with that sweet look which at the mountain's foot I first beheld. His arms he opened, after some advisement within himself elected, looking first well at the ruin, and laid hold of me. And even as he who acts and meditates, for I it seems that he provides beforehand, so upward lifting me towards the summit of a huge rock, he scanned another crag, saying, To that one grapple afterwards, but try first if it is such that will hold thee. This was no way for one clothed with a cloak, for hardly we, he light, and I pushed upward, were able to ascend from jag to jag. And had it not been that upon that precinct shorter was the ascent than on the other, he I know not, but I had been dead beat. But because Malabolja towards the mouth of the profoundest well is all inclining, the structure of each valley doth import that one bank rises and the other sinks. Still we arrived at length upon the point wherefrom the last stone breaks itself asunder. The breath was from my lungs so milked away when I was up that I could go no farther. Nay, I sat down upon my first arrival. Now it behoves thee thus to put off sloth, my master said, for sitting upon down or under quilt one cometh not to fame. Without in which whoso his life consumes such vestige leaveth of himself on earth, as smoke in air, or in the water foam. And therefore raise thee up, overcome the anguish with spirit that overcometh every battle, if with its heavy body it sink not. A longer stairway it behoves thee mount, tis not enough from these to have departed. Let it avail thee, if thou understand me. Then I uprose, showing myself provided better with breath than I did feel myself, and said, Go on, for I am strong and bold. Upward we took our way along the crag, which jagged was, and narrow, and difficult, and more precipitous far than that before. Speaking I went, not to appear exhausted, whereat a voice from the next moat came forth, not well adapted to articulate words. I know not what it said, though o'er the back I would now is of the arch that passes there, but he seemed moved to anger who was speaking. I was bent downward, but my living eyes could not attain the bottom for the dark, wherefore I... Master, see that thou arrive at the next round, and let us descend the wall, for as from hence I hear and understand not, so I look down, and nothing I distinguish. Other response, he said, I make thee not, except the doing, for the modest asking ought to be followed by the deed in silence. We from the bridge descended at its head, where it connects itself with the eighth bank, and then was manifest to me the bolja and I beheld therein a terrible throng of serpents, and of such a monstrous kind that the resemblance still congeals my blood. Let Libya boast no longer with her sand, for if Chalidri, Jaculi, and Fere she breeds, with Chenkri and with Amphisbena, neither so many plagues nor so malignant e'er showed me with all Ethiopia, nor with whatever on the Red Sea is. Among this cruel and most dismal throng, people were running naked and affrighted, without the hope of whole or heliotrope. They had their hands with serpents bound behind them. These riveted upon their reins the tail and head, and were in front of them entwined. And lo, at one who was upon our side, there darted forth a serpent which transfixed him, there where the neck is knotted to the shoulders. Nor oh so quickly ere, nor I was written, as he took fire and burned, and ashes wholly behoved it that in falling he became. And when he on the ground was thus destroyed, the ashes drew together, and of themselves into himself they instantly returned. Even thus by the great sages tis confessed the phoenix dies, and then is born again, when it approaches its five hundredth year. On herb or grain it feeds not in its life, but only on tears of incense and omomum, and nard and myrrh are its last winding sheet. And as he is who falls, and knows not how, by force of demons who to earth down drag him, or other oppilation that binds man. When he rises and around him looks, wholly bewildered by the mighty anguish which he has suffered, and in looking sighs, such was that sinner after he had risen. Justice of God, oh how severe it is, that blows like these and vengeance poureth down. The guide thereafter asked him who he was, whence he replied, 
I reigned from Tuscany a short time since into this cruel gorge. A bestial life, and not a human, pleased me, even as the mule I was. I'm Vanni Fucci, beast, and Pistoia was my worthy den. And I unto the guide, tell him to stir not, and ask what crime has thrust him here below, for once a man of blood and wrath I saw him. And the sinner who had heard dissembled not, but unto me directed mind and face, and with a melancholy shame was painted. Then said, it pains me more that thou hast caught me amid this misery where thou seest me than when I from the other life was taken. What thou demandest I cannot deny. So low am I put down because I robbed the sacristy of the fair ornaments, and falsely once twist laid upon another. But thou thou mayest not such a sight enjoy, if thou shalt e'er be out of the dark places, thine ears to my announcement open here. Pistoia first of Neri groweth meager, then Florence doth renew her men and manners. Mars draws a vapor up from Valdi Magra, which is with turbid clouds enveloped round, and with impetuous and bitter tempest for Campo Pichon shall be the battle, when it shall suddenly rend the mist asunder, so that each Bianco shall thereby be smitten. And this I have said that it may give thee pain. Inferno, Canto 25 At the conclusion of his words, the thief lifted his hands aloft with both the figs, crying, Take that, God, for at thee I aim them. From that time forth the serpents were my friends, for one entwined itself about his neck as if it said, I will not thou speak more. And round his arms another, and rebound him, clinching itself together so in front that with them he could not a motion make. Pistoia, ah, Pistoia, why resolve not to burn thyself to ashes, and so perish, since in ill-doing thou thy seed excellest? Through all the sombre circles of this hell, spirit, I saw not against God so proud, not he who fell at Thebes down from the walls. He fled away and spake no further word, and I beheld a centaur full of rage come crying out, Where is, where is the scoffer? I do not think Marema has so many serpents as he had all along his back, as far as where our countenance begins, upon the shoulders and behind the nape. With wings wide open was a dragon lying, and he sets fire to all that he encounters. My master said, that one is Caucus, who beneath the rock upon Mount Aventine created oftentimes a lake of blood. He goes not on the same road with his brothers by reason of the fraudulent theft he made, of the great herd which he had near to him, whereat his torturous actions ceased beneath the mace of Hercules, who pre-adventure gave him a hundred, and he felt not ten. While he was speaking thus, he had pressed by in spirits, thee had underneath us come, of which nor I was aware, nor my leader. Until what time they shouted, Who are you? On which account our story made a halt, and then we were intent on them alone. I did not know them, but it came to pass, as it is wont to happen by some chance, that one to name the other was compelled, exclaiming, Where can Kianfa have remained? Whence I, so that the leader might attend, upward from chin to nose my finger laid, if thou art, reader, slow now to believe what I shall say, it will no marvel be, for I who saw it hardly can admit it, as I was holding, raised on them my brows, behold, a serpent with six feet darts forth in front of one and fastens wholly on him. With middle feet it bound him round the paunch, and with the forward ones his arms it seized, then thrust its teeth through one cheek and the other. The hindermost it stretched upon his thighs and put its tail through in between the two, and up behind along the reins outspread it. 
Ivy was never fastened by its barbs unto a tree so, as this horrible reptile upon the other's limbs entwined his own. Then they stuck close as if of heated wax. They had been made, and intermixed their color. Nor one nor the other seemed now what he was. Even as proceedeth on before the flame upward along the paper a brown color, which is not black as yet, and the white dies, the other two looked on, and each of them cried out, O me, Angelo, how thou changest! Behold, thou now art neither two nor one. Already the two heads had become one. When there appeared to us two figures mingled into one face wherein the two were lost, of the four lists were fashioned the two arms, the thighs and legs, the belly and the chest, members became that never yet were seen. Every original aspect there was cancelled too, and yet none did the perverted image appear, and such departed with slow pace. Even as a lizard under the great scourge of days, canicular, exchanging hedge, lighting appeareth if the road it cross. Thus did appear, coming towards the bellies of the two others, a small fiery serpent, livid and black, as is a peppercorn. And in that part whereat is first received our ailment, it one of them transfixed, then downward fell in front of him extended. The one transfixed looked at it, but said not, nay, rather with feet motionless he yawned, just as if sleep or fever had assailed him. He at the serpent gazed, and it at him. One through the wound, the other through the mouth, smoked violently, and the smoke commingled. Henceforth be silent, Lucan, where he mentions wretched Sabellius and Nasidius, and wait to hear what now shall be shot forth. Be silent, Ovid of Cadmus and Arethusa, for if him to a snake, her to a fountain, converts he fabling, that I grudge him not, because two natures never front to front has he transmuted, so that both the forms to interchange their matter ready were. Together they responded in such wise that to a fork the serpent cleft his tail, and eke the wounded do his feet together. The legs together with the thighs themselves adhered so that in little time the juncture no sign whatever made that was apparent. He with the cloven tail assumed the figure, the other one was losing, and his skin became elastic, and the others hard. I saw the arms draw inward at the armpits, and both feet of the reptile that were short lengthen as much as those contracted were. Thereafter the hind feet together twisted became the member that a man conceals, and of his own the wretch had two created, while both of them the exhalation veils with a new color and engenders hair on one of them, and depiliates the other. The one uprose, and down the other fell through turning, not away their impious lamps, underneath which each one his muzzle changed. He who was standing drew it towards the temples, and from excess of matter which came thither issued the ears from out the hollow cheeks, what did not backward run, and was retained of that excess, made to the face a nose, and the lips thickened far as was befitting. He who lay prostrate thrust his muzzle forward, and backward draws the ears into his head, in the same manner as the snail its horns. And so the tongue, which was entire and apt for speech before, is cleft, and the bi-forked in the other closes up, and the smoke ceases. The soul, which to a reptile had been changed, along the valley hissing takes to flight, and after him the other speaking sputters. Then did he turn upon him his new shoulders and said to the other, I'll have Buoso run, crawling as I have done along this road. In this way I beheld the seventh ballast shift and reshift, and here be my excuse, the novelty, if aught my pen transgress. And notwithstanding that mine eyes might be somewhat bewildered, and my mind dismayed, they could not flee away so secretly. 
but that I plainly saw, Puccio Sciancato, and he it was whose soul of three companions which came in the beginning was not changed. The other was he whom thou, Gavil, weepest. End of Inferno, Canti 21 to 25